Hey y'all, welcome to 4C Imagery, episode four. I'm Shabrika Bell. Today we're going to get into some exciting reviews on television series, fashion, art, holiday movies, holiday food, and video games. So take a seat, relax, and let us give you the rundown on what's hot or what's not in entertainment and holiday food items. So we're gonna start this thing off right. We got 4C Imagery in the house tonight. Up first, Noah and his review of The Walking Dead. Let's get it. Hello, I'm Noah Jazabski. Welcome back to Foreign CNC TV. Today I will be talking and discussing about the first episode of the 2010 TV horror show, The Walking Dead. So for those that don't know, The Walking Dead is about a sheriff deputy named Rick Grimes who is shot in the line of fire. He goes into a coma and wakes up in a hospital about five months later, and the zombie apocalypse has happened. Rick gets out of the hospital and goes to find help. On his way to find help, he meets a man named Morgan who has been living with his son Dwayne in his house. Let's just say he don't actually meet him. He meets the front end of a shovel. Rick wakes up and talks to Morgan as Morgan tells him the world has ended. The next day, Rick goes with Morgan and his son to Rick's house. Rick cannot find his family. Rick thinks that they may have went to Atlanta. Rick and Morgan give each other radios to keep in contact with each other. Rick leaves and is on his way to Atlanta. As Rick leaves and heads to Atlanta, Morgan goes back home with his son Dwayne trying to bring himself to kill his infected zombie wife. He starts crying and tells his son to stay downstairs. Rick is on his way to Atlanta and runs out of gas. He stops by this house to ask for gas. The people who live there are already dead as they killed themselves. Rick finds a horse, however, and takes him to Atlanta. Rick makes it to Atlanta as he rides on his horse and finds out that Atlanta is overrun by the zombies as well. The horse then gets eaten and Rick falls off the horse and hides in a tank. He then hears a voice in the tank saying, Hey, you want out alive? This voice is a man named Glenn, who will become a very important character later and throughout the series. The episode ends with a wide shot of Rick in the tank with zombies surrounding the tank, with a song playing called Welcome to My World. And then the episode ends. So that is my review for the TV show, The Walking Dead. As the show goes on, and as the seasons go on, we get more into fighting the living and not fighting the dead. Some of the villains you can look forward to later in the seasons are Shane, the Governor, Negan, Terminus, the Whispers, and many more. Brandon met a girl on a dating app. He finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being- Hey, sorry I didn't respond, I was driving. She must be a keeper. Loved that review on The Walking Dead. It's one of my favorite shows, Noah. I'm Katie Lee and today I will be reviewing a Christmas movie since it's around the time. It's called Christmas Together. Christmas Together is a little TV movie made in 2020 for all the Hallmark Christmas movie fans out there. The movie starts off with a New York painter named Ava, whose Christmas plans with her boyfriend get derailed and she has to decide where to go alone for Christmas. A man named Mason is introduced as an English teacher from Tinsel, California, whose wife passed away seven years ago and apart from having an 11-year-old daughter, has been alone ever since. Desperate to show her father that she is responsible enough to have a dog, Mia takes it upon herself to rent out the guest house like her father had planned, so she cleans up the space, decorates it for Christmas, and creates a post online. Ava finds the post and turns up at the address provided. Mason, unaware of what his daughter has done, allows this random woman to continue with her vacation in the guest house. Ava explores Tinsel and slowly starts to fall in love with the charming little town. She enters a Christmas store and buys Christmas lights and a lattice to help decorate her host's home. She also paints multiple paintings for them. Ava receives a phone call from her boyfriend who informs her that due to the stresses of his new promotion that they should take a break. 
The neighbor Deb and Mason's daughter Mia take it upon themselves to come up with a plan to get the two lonely souls together. Meanwhile, Ava, who has been wanting to open up her own art gallery for quite some time, begins looking for a rental space in Tinsel. Deb and her husband plan a double date dinner, but then pretend to have an injury and a work emergency. The main characters end up bonding over that dinner. Everything seems to be going great, that is, until Ava's weasel of a boyfriend randomly shows up. Without discussing it with Ava, he has taken a huge promotion in Colorado and says that they are moving there. Realizing that they are on different paths, Ava decides to break up with him for good. After the now ex-boyfriend leaves, Mason shows up to check on Ava. Ava confesses that she doesn't plan on leaving and is looking for a place in Tinsel. Mason says she can move in with him and his daughter, and they share their first cringeworthy kiss. Come Christmas Day, everyone is together, and Mia finally gets her puppy, who she's named Prancer. Oh yeah, and his folks are coming over for Christmas, so that happened fast. Now I know this is a typical Hallmark Channel movie, but can we take a second to observe just how terrible of a movie this actually is? First off, nobody has any sort of chemistry, and it feels like they're being forced to act in this movie. Mason looks like he is 30 tops, yet has an 11-year-old daughter and a PhD in literature. Even his friend points this out. And my personal favorite, at one point the heater goes out, so Ava just walks into the man's house, into his bedroom, to let him know. Mason fixes the heater, but one can only wonder why it was needed in the first place, seeing as they're in California. And the kicker? After all of this, she still leaves the door open. Wide open. Now these were just a few examples. I could go on. If it wasn't for the spectacular display of Christmas lights, Christmas Together would go down in history as the worst Christmas movie ever. That's depressing. Well, that wraps up my review. Hope you guys liked it. See y'all next semester. Thank you, Katie Lee. Today, I'm going to review a serious topic, one that is not for the faint of heart. What is it, you ask? The critically acclaimed 2017 competitive team shooter, Overwatch. So without further ado... Warning, I'm just goofing in this review. I personally don't like this game, but it's okay if you do smiley face. Hello, this is past me, and I'm going to first start off and say sorry. Uh, that I don't have any game footage. Uh, I can get some, but I didn't have a capture card, so you're not gonna see any of mine, but it's okay, we can still make this work. I can still do some goofs and some laughs with the green screen. And right, look at this, boom. See, funny. Let's talk about the actual game. Nothing really new has been added in a while. And when I mean a while, I mean the last new character was released in April of 2020. It's December 2021. That's almost two years. And I mean, yes, there's patches occasionally, but like nobody cares about patches. They care about new content, but they're not dropping any. So there's really no point. The game gets old really fast. And when I mean fast, I mean when I was playing it to like make this actual video, I can only play like two games at a time because it's boring. And also, it's infuriating. Like, you hop on for maybe an hour, you already hate your day. And that I don't know if this is just me, maybe I'm just the, the weird one, but personally, I don't like playing games to be angry. Like, you're supposed to play them because you like them, not because you're <laughs> you need to prove anything. But hey, maybe maybe I'm the weird maybe I'm the weird one. Honestly, I think the best part of the game from all my experience is the arcade mode. The arcade mode is so fun because you play it because it's arcade. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. The cycle of this game is you you play it, okay, you turn on your console, open the game or PC, whatever you have. Play the game for a little bit, get mad. And then get off. And then and then what? It's not fun. Oh wait, I think this part's also important. The game is meant to be addicting, right? So that's how you get people who 
don't normally play games to play it all the time. It's it's the it's the uh, <laughs> it's the video game industrial complex. Like you take this game that's kind of bad, right? That's competitive and people enjoy, and then what you do is you make it addicting, right? So in Overwatch, for example, the main thing that people play for is cosmetics and ranks, right? Cosmetics are the more approachable thing, but you have to gamble for the for the um, cosmetics you want because they sell loot boxes, which are I think they're two dollars a piece, and you don't even have a have a guaranteed chance of getting what you want. Or you can get the in-game currency, which takes copious amounts of time to earn. So it's like you're made to play the game just to unlock something you kind of want. And then sometimes the skin's not even that good. Like you'll play with it and be like, wow, this is nice. This is really cool. I worked so hard for this. And then you forget about it because the next one comes out. And it's like that over and over and over with every new skins or with every new cosmetic like event they drop the skin the cosmetics they're good and so that's how they keep you playing there's no i don't know i don't know game's bad game's bad don't play it thank you for listening to me rant for this second not for something more enjoyable shubrika's up next with her view of food i'm not sure which one i forgot but don't miss it you won't forget It's the most wonderful time of the year. Hey, your girl got vocals, don't she? Oh, no, I don't? Whatever. Anyway, welcome to 4C Imagery. I'm your girl, Shabrika Bell. And today I'm going to review some hors d'oeuvres for your holiday gatherings. So if you like to take your smorgasbord up a notch, stay tuned while I give you my review on some sweet and savory holiday foods. Mmm, now I'm hungry. I'm going on break. Come with me to Aldi's. Today, we're going to look at some holiday goodies. Take a look at these yummy looking treats. There's always some interesting finds in the Aldi's fine section. Now that I have my groceries, we're all set to go. Here's the items I'll be reviewing today. Okay, y'all, so we're going to get into it. This is the cherry and rosemary. Hmm. Not bad. Little bit on the mild side. Um, you can taste the cherry though. This is apricot and cumin. Hmm, pretty good pleasing. This is probably gonna be my favorite because I make a bomb pear tart around the holidays, so. Oh yeah, that's it. Big and honey. I'm really liking that. So far, these two are my favorite. The pear and cinnamon and the fig and honey. Mm, 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 mm. Then the apricot and cumin and then the cherry and rosemary. So the cheese, this is the truffle. Definitely a winner. Has a bold flavor to it. I'm gonna need something to drink, y'all. 
Mm. This is really good as well. Red grape sparkling juice. This is white cheddar. Let's try it. Bomb. I like that. Has a nice floral essence to it. And this is Gouda. I know I'm making a lot of sound effects, but I'm hungry. Mm. I would definitely recommend, especially around the holidays. Very good. So for the sake of time, you guys, I had to cut the video short, but I did try the fruit spreads with the cheese and crackers. And the fig and honey paired perfectly with the white cheddar. I give these products a 5 out of 5. And Dang, your girl was hungry. I was wasting cracker crumbs all over my shirt. Those crackers was busting. With those fruit spreads, though, I can't even lie. I need to head back to Aldi's to get some more. But yeah, that's just a little sum sum to get your taste buds going while waiting on your holiday dinner to get ready. Or you can serve these during your holiday parties. Remember, the fruit spreads are seasonal items, so you might want to head over to Aldi's and grab them before they're all gone. I'm Shabrika Bell for 4C Imagery, and now let's take a look at some art with Ron. See you soon. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back to the final episode of 4C Imagery. I'm your host, Ronald Wilden, and today we are going to be reviewing the artwork of one of my favorite artists, Banksy. He's a mysterious graffiti artist who started as a teenager in Bristol, UK back in the 90s. His artwork is typically controversial, and East Peace has its own story. To this day, no one knows who exactly Banksy is, but his artwork has made millions being sold in auctions. Today, I will be going through and reviewing some of my favorite pieces. In at number 10 is called Rage, the Flower Thrower. This piece is located on a wall on the side of a garage in Jerusalem. It features a man dressed in riot gear with a bandana covering his face. Besides throwing a Molotov cocktail, he is throwing a bunch of flowers. By substituting a weapon for flowers, it appears that Banksy is advocating for peace. 9 is called Mona Lisa Bazooka. This piece appeared in Soho District of West London around 2007. It takes one of the most recognizable women and pairs her with one of the most powerful weapons. A nice twist to Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, don't you say? At number 8 we have One Nation Under CCTV. This is one of Banksy's largest pieces and it appeared in London sometime in 2008 and he had to erect three stories of scaffolding to accomplish it. It was done behind a security fence and no one really knows how he managed to pull it off. At number 7 we have Bomb Hugger. This is one of Banksy's original creations and it was found in London's East End back in 2003. This piece symbolizes the horror of war next to the innocence and purity of a young little girl. In at number 6 is called Sweep It Under the Carpet. It appeared on Chalk Farm Road in North London in 2006, and it's probably one of the more recognizable artworks from Banksy. It shows a woman who is dressed as a maid and sweeping dirt under the cover of a brick wall. They say it's to represent the reluctance of the Western world to deal with global issues. At number 5 is a more modern piece by Banksy entitled Mobile Lovers. It was discovered in 2014 in the town of Bristol. Shown as two people embracing each other, but their attention is focused on their phones. It is a not-so-subtle reference to modern technology. Coming in at number 4 is Child Soldier. This piece appeared in Los Angeles in 2011. Pictured as a small child soldier with a heavy machine gun surrounded by flowers that appear to be childlike. It is supposed to represent how the innocence of children all around the world are being corrupted by weapons at an early age. At number 3 is Keep Your Coins, I Want Change. It first appeared back in 2004 in Melbourne, Australia, and it depicts a homeless man with a sign that states he doesn't want physical money, but rather the social change. The way someone is able to change their own life and the circumstances they are in appears to be way more valuable. 
And number two, we have probably one of the more simple artworks by Banksy, but its meaning hits hard. This piece is called, I Don't Believe in Global Warming. In 2009, Banksy spray painted these six words in all capitals besides Regent's Canal in Camden, North London. At last, we have arrived at number one, my personal favorite piece of work done by Banksy. This piece is called Can't Beat That Feeling, and unlike the other pieces shown, this one only exists as a screen print. In 1978, during the Vietnam War, Kim Fook was originally photographed fleeing her home in Trang Bang Village after it had just been hit by a napalm blast. This is a dig at American commercialism and the dangers of capitalism and the impact on children. And there we have it. Today we reviewed my top 10 works of art done by one of my favorite artists. Hopefully some of these have inspired you to create art that is important meaning to them. Thank you everybody for tuning in to the last episode of 4C Imagery and I hope to see you all again. Ron out.
Don't worry, that's what I'm saying. I would have paid full price for this. They look like they clean, they made this out of the trash. Like, like if you work thing. at the car wash and it's a hot day, wow. and <laughs> you don't want to get your shorts wet, and you wear those. Or a lot of Oh, hey, y'all. Welcome back. I'm still thinking about those see-through pants. I might have to get some of those. Today was fun, though. Noah gave us his review on The Walking Dead. Katie Lee gave us a holiday movie review. Zach gave us a video review. And Shabrika, that's me, gave you a review on holiday food. Ron gave us an art review. And Raquel reviewed fashion. We hope you enjoyed our show as much as we've enjoyed making it. I'm Shabrika Bell for 4C Imagery. Until next time, peace.